DaVinci Resolve 20.1 is out now, and there are some major workflow improvements. So here are my top nine favorite new features. Number one, shift space. Shift space affects search dialog for adding effects, generators, and titles on all pages. So this is really similar to the select tool picker that's in Fusion with shift space bar to add a node. Now we can tap shift space bar on the keyboards while working on the edit page to add any installed effect. Even custom presets like Magic Zoom from Mr. Alex Tech or, or maybe hit shift space bar to place on top a new title. On the color page, you can use shift space bar to add effects to nodes, making it simple to load up Resolve effects like the, the brand new Resolve effects color tone diffuser to add a dreamy low contrast look. Now the best part about shift space is that it just removes the slow process of clicking to open the effects palette and scrolling a huge list to find effects, especially when you already know what you want. Oh, and DaVinci Resolve knows what you want too because it retains a history list per page. To use an effect or generator in the list, type the effect you want, arrow down with the keyboard, and hit return to load it. Even the icons are displayed next to the name of the effect. Now that's polish. Number two, viewer rulers and guides. Now on the upper right of the timeline viewer, click the viewer guides drop down carrot. There's a new category there to help create custom guides to help with framing and alignment. They even allow for snapping to the edges of clips. Also on the top menu bar, the view menu also has a new section for rulers and guides where you can type in a specific coordinate of those vertical and horizontal guides. Special note here, the DaVinci Resolve pixel coordinates, zero, zero, actually start in the very middle of the frame, not in the corner, like some other software out there. If you prefer, you can just drag your own guide interactively on the viewer by clicking and dragging your mouse from the ruler bar across over the image. It's guides like this that can help us editors line up an eye line or action between cuts so we can lead our audience's attention. And of course, laying out graphics or creating the ever-changing social media safe zones right there on the edit timeline, that's easier than ever now. Hover your cursor over the ruler bar for a hidden right click option to hide the guides to avoid the snapping behavior or just get rid of them or just hold alt or option while dragging the clip in the viewer to bypass snapping. Number three, better keyframes on the edit page. Have you ever keyframed anything? Maybe just a simple zoom and then later you, you trimmed it shorter so that all the keyframes now exist on some imaginary frame that isn't part of the clip that you actually see on the timeline. Well, now we can actually see the keyframes outside of the clip segment range used on the timeline, right below on the improved keyframe tray. So like before, you can still navigate with the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard to, to jump to existing keyframes. But this is just gonna make refining animations so much easier when you have them outside of the range of the clip uh, because you can actually drag them around. DaVinci Resolve 20.1 also added the ability to adjust both curves and keyframes using that keyframe tray, as well as they've added a keyboard shortcut option if you wish to toggle keyframe slash curve. Number four, timeline shortcuts. Now check this out. Under the playback drop down menu, all the way down to where it says go to, there's an option for mouse pointer. This go to mouse pointer command will jump the playhead to the location of the cursor. The default hotkey is C, think C for cue up the playhead. Now anywhere I move my cursor over the timeline, I can tap C and the playhead just jumps to that cursor. Any place, including hovering over the top of a clip on the timeline is fair game for that mouse pointer. Full extent and detail zoom also work with shortcut hotkeys now as well. Full extent zoom is kind of like zoom to fit for the timeline, it shows you everything from a wide zoomed out view. But unlike zoom to fit, full extent zoom is way smarter because it dynamically changes as the timeline gets longer or shorter with no extra interaction. See, as I append clips with F12 or my append key, you can see the zoom gets adjusted on the fly. Detail zoom is what it sounds like. It's a very close view to see down to the frame level. So to make use of these new timeline zoom commands, I've changed zoom to fit from shift Z to full extent zoom to be shift Z and the detail zoom to be shift X for X marks the spot. Number five, 
AI improvements. Magic Mask 2 is now the default in Fusion. Magic Mask 2 is Blackmagic's AI rotoscoping tool, and it's a complete rewrite of the original Magic Mask that uses machine learning to recognize objects for masking. Now, the reason that I'm so stoked that this is in Fusion is because the Fusion page has the best masking tools of any editing software in the market, including a mask paint tool with a soft edge that makes any frame-by-frame -frame flicker cleanup extremely fast and precise. Use the garbage mat input of Magic Mask to remove any extra pixels outside of the intended mask edge. AI Smart Reframe on the edit page was updated to isolate in pan only and tilt only mode for all those vertical social media versions we have to make nowadays. Number six, cache fixes. I'm calling this cache fixes, although it's probably not all cache, but it does have something to do with memory and previewing stuff. So do you ever use Photoshop or Affinity Photo to make graphics for a Resolve project? Well, updated and replaced graphic still images on disk get updated in the viewer immediately when they're overwritten with the same name. So for me, I use Affinity Photo and export my graphics either using Photoshop documents where I can actually split them out to layers on the timeline in Resolve or as PNGs. Either way, if I overwrite the existing file using the same name and location, you'll see that result immediately in DaVinci Resolve now. Saving Magic Mask on the color page, there's improved cache retention on duplicated timelines and new versions, and waveforms are improved. They're more accurate, but more importantly, you can force a redraw on the Fairlight page by selecting a clip, right-clicking to select Clip Operations, Regenerate Waveforms. Number seven, sync workflow improvements. Resolve 20.1 added options to manually sync externally recorded audio to video using endpoints, out points or markers. So in the past, you had to line up playheads in the media page audio waveform panel, and this new manual syncing method is more traditional, and it enables assistants to start syncing directly on the edit page. Number eight, easier three-point editing. On the lower left of the source viewer, there's a brand new button to select persistent inserts for video and audio, video only, or audio only. This is welcome because it removes the need to enable or disable the orange track destination targets for isolating a three-point edit when you only intend to add video without audio, like for B-roll. Use the place on top edit command and done. Number nine, quality of life upgrades. Fusion has a new project setting checkbox to downscale to the timeline resolution. So even if you're not using massive 6K or 12K files, it's really helpful because it's dynamic, so it'll speed up your render times for timeline-based Fusion compositions. And it appears to work with Fusion Clips as well. So for example, you can start working with the timeline resolution set to 1080p for great editing performance, which is gonna create your timeline-based Fusion composites at 1080 with a 6K clip. And then later on, before delivery, change your timeline resolution to 4K, and that's gonna force your media in for that big 6K clip down to 4K instead of down to 1080. And because of resolution independence, it just all magically works. The most important thing is that the aspect ratio stays the same. This checkbox will not affect any source resolution clip if you drag it directly in from the media pool into the Fusion setup as like a new element into your comp, like a media in two, media in three. Enable Disable Clip has a new toggle behavior where it toggles what is on to be off and then what's off to be on with the shortcut D. The color page now has the familiar change timeline settings option in the viewer, which is great if you need to change resolution right there. Some other upgrades of note are that bin layouts get retained for multi-user projects. Blackmagic also added CSV text file import into the text tool and there's new Apple Vision Pro immersive tools. Hey, I'm Chadwick, I appreciate you so much. This is Creative Video Tips. I hope you're as stoked with these new feature upgrades to DaVinci Resolve as I am, and because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.